The partial shutdown of the U.S. government now approaching the one-week mark as both sides appear unwilling to back down over funding for President Trump's promised border wall. In his Christmas conference call with U.S. troops stationed overseas, here's what the president had to say. Well, I want to wish everybody a really Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Uh, just remember, the people in our country, we're very proud of you. The country's doing well. We have a little bit of a shutdown because we believe in walls and we believe in borders and we believe in barriers. And, you know, we have a special country. People have to come in through the legal process, not just walk in. We have no idea who they are. And we're stopping drugs at a record rate, but we need some help, and the help is the wall. All right, joining me to discuss the shutdown and oh so much more is former Florida Democratic Chair Mitch Caesar. Mitch, welcome, sir. How are you, Steve? I'm good. Now, in, in lieu of a, a conservative uh, opponent for you, uh, I will take my neutral self and portray the opposing point of view to an extent just to make it a little more interesting. Just want you to be aware of the role I'm playing um, in, in the absence of someone else. Okay, so let's start with, with, with what's going on here. Uh, day five of the government shutdown. Trump says he's sticking to his guns on the wall funding. Chuck Schumer, you know, keeps saying uh, not one penny for a wall. We hear about some kind of, you know, offer of a compromise. Where do you think we're headed and how long will this go on? Well, God only knows how long we'll be continuing to do this. I'm not sure Trump knows, so nobody else knows either. Remember, he had a deal with Mitch McConnell to pass this before the government shot down, shut down uh, and then broke the deal with McConnell and the whole congressional uh, uh, groupings of Republicans and, indeed, even Democrats. What we have to remember is Democrats are for border security as well. But it's not about a wall. It's about border security. There are other ways you can do this, such as, um, you know, different devices electronically, uh, you know, different types of fencing without spending $5 billion based just on a campaign promise. What it really may boil down to, in some words, if, if we're looking for an optimistic view uh, that the president used very, very recently, is he said a fence, a wall, whatever you call it. That might be, if we choose to be optimistic, the opening. Because all the people around the border, all the experts have said, you need something that's see-through, not a solid wall. Maybe a chain-link fence. Maybe something else. Uh, it's, it's not necessary to put up that kind of money. I don't know how long it'll go on. What distresses me beyond the obvious of the almost million workers who aren't getting paid or getting furloughed or get their money later is the fact that the government being open is an important part of the economy. And it's an in, in, integral ingredient. And with the stock market having such terrible troubles in the last month, as you said earlier in the show, the worst December since 1931, the Great Depression, uh, we want to get the government back and working. This is going to hurt the economy further, well, well beyond just federal workers. Well, let, 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 let's get off the wall and let's, uh, let's uh, agree to uh, kind of disagree. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that Democrats did, in fact, uh, vote for a huge spending package. You know, they all favored a, a wall included in that. But uh, let, let's move on to the stock market. Today, yes, worst December since, uh, since 1931. Today, a record-setting gain of 1,084 points on the Dow, almost 5%, the biggest percentage gain since 2009. Uh, many analysts think that the, uh, the, the market was uh, oversold. But, you know, Trump uh, tweeted out recently his problem with the Fed chairman, uh, Powell, and there were rumors today that Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, could be in trouble for kind of going public with the fact that he was talking to banks about having enough cash on hand, uh, yet the market went up 1,000 points today. I mean, is there any rhyme or reason, politically speaking, that you could think of? I think the market's being very, very emotional, to be honest with you. I think the corporate earnings uh, are pretty good. Yes, there's a worldwide slowdown. But it's not reflective of the market being so much. I frankly do lay some of the blame on the president, which I'm sure won't shock you. Uh, <laughs> most specifically, as you said, him attacking the Fed chairman and saying, how can we remove him? And that's what blew up on Christmas Eve. Uh, it more than doubled, almost tripled the losses it was at at that moment when he tweeted that out. He needs to actually have somebody take away a phone from him. This is financially irresponsible. He needs to be quiet. Mnuchin, I think, probably had good intentions, just really doesn't know what he's doing. And that, frankly, goes goes back to the fact that the president originally promised when he got elected he'd hire the best and the brightest. That has obviously not well, occurred. I think and and yeah. you're having a very hard time hiring good people based on the last two years. It's a resume killer. Well the market and, run up uh, he, he doesn't listen the market run up before yeah. October, I guess the people were competent then because the market was just exploding for almost two years or at least a year and a half before it started sliding in October. Let me get to this. Uh, there are reports that more than forty Democrats have signed on to the the green 
Green New Deal, which is being pushed by incoming Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez uh, to fight mm -hmm. what they call global warming and bring about economic and social justice. It could cost $5.2 trillion before it's over. How far will the new House members and the new House leadership go in spending and proposing this uh, new global warming greenhouse thing? Well, I think what's really tempering that is the comments by Claire McCaskill, the outgoing uh, senator from Missouri, uh, the Democrat who lost, who basically said that we have to look at the people in the Midwest, the white voters, we have to look at whether or not uh, there's a good economic message we could do this, similar to Sherrod Brown, who won Ohio by 6% in this last election in November. You know, I gave a speech before the DNC yeah. a year and a half ago saying, we have to figure out who we are and what we want to be. I'm not sure that that's occurred yet. Yeah, well, you I know, you know, Mitch, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I got to go. I'm up against the clock. My fault. I, I, I got involved in the question. But also, Claire McCaskill's kind of said, who's, who's Ocasio-Cortez to get all this attention and have all this gravitas? Thank you. Mitch Caesar, appreciate it. Always great to talk to you, my friend. Thank you. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.